what is up everybody i am back i am back i am back and i have an exciting video and some exciting news for you today so stay tuned and i'll be right back to my channel and as I said before I wanted to share some exciting news that I just found out last night y'all I was getting ready to go to bed I got on YouTube and I was trying to find me an ASMR video to listen to because sometimes I need my ASMR to kind of help relax my mind and you know clear my head help me kind of you know fall off to sleep peacefully but as I was strolling as I was scrolling Y'all got that Mississippi slang. As I was scrolling, I saw a new video that Donna Stamir had posted on his channel, and it said the most beautiful thing. It said Nigerian airports are going to open to international travel on August the 29th, and y'all, I wanted to get up and do my happy dance. I was like, ooh, hallelujah. I have been so ready. So ready. And I was... I was kind of starting to get discouraged because I was like, man, we've been waiting. Like, I know I've been waiting since March because I bought an airline ticket to go to Nigeria in March because when all this COVID stuff first started getting kicked off, I was like, I think I'm going to start my repatriation early. I'm going to get up out of here. But what happened to me was once I got my ticket, they closed the airport. I think the day before I was supposed to arrive, they closed the international border, so there was no way I, I would be able to get in. So I had to cancel the trip, and they gave me a credit that um, that lasts to like the credit for my airline ticket lasts. It lasts until the end of this year, like the end of December 2020. So I was hoping to pray that I would get to use that ticket to start my repatriation, uh, and thank God. Cause I was starting to get nervous y'all like on everything um and I guess maybe it wasn't meant for me to leave in March I don't think my ancestors was was with it you know they was like no nah, you gotta stay you know it ain't time yet so what I've been doing since then like when the pandemic first started you know the <clears throat> you know it was limited mask like you know people didn't have masks a lot of nurses and hospitals and medical institutions didn't have masks so I just broke out the sewing machine and started sewing and, you know, making masks to sell to my family. Well, first I made them, I started out making it for my family, making them for my family because I wanted my family, my family to have protection. And then other people started asking. So I just started making them and selling them. And then I started making them and donate them to different hospitals, um, <clears throat> mental health facilities throughout the United States and stuff like that. I sent. I sent some masks um, to a homeless shelter in New York. I remember that. Just, you know, I said, well, since I have to be here, I can't repatriate and leave, then I may as well make myself useful and help others. So that's what I did. And I, I thank God for that experience. I was, I was glad to be a help to other people and, you know, make sure that they're protected and at least feel secure. I don't know why it is, but every time I get ready to come outside to make a video, noise come up but that's okay it is what it is i'm in nature so we're good but anyway so now that i have done the work and i have prepared a little bit 
I am getting ready to go. I am getting to getting ready to start my repatriation back to the motherland. And honestly, I'm going to try to move fast because this may be a short window um, open for us to leave, for those of us who want to leave. So I think I'm going to make my move um, probably around the last of September or within the first two weeks of October. I'm going to go ahead. I'm getting prepared now like I have people who are already over there in Nigeria who are helping me get things set up. You know, thank God for that. And basically, it's just up to me to get prepared here. Like, you know, get rid of a lot of things that I don't want to, that I, I'm not going to use or take with me that's not useful, like sell them or donate them and stuff like that. Um, and just basically, you know, get my business together because I want to be able to still do business here in America as far as my services and the products that I sell and live abroad and also do business there too so it's going to take a lot so i'm just using this time to continue to get myself prepared so when the time comes i'll be ready you know the saying you know if you stay ready you don't have to get ready so that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to get myself situated to where i'm ready um i also i think Ghana airports, they're opening up to international travel too. I think they're opening September the 1st. And actually, I got I got the news about Ghana before. It was like a few days before I got the news about Nigeria last night. So when I, when I heard the news about Ghana opening their airports to international travel on September the 1st, I was like, okay, you know, okay, good, good. Maybe, you know, Nigeria will follow suit and it'll be a little hope for me. And, but I was still kind of nervous, but then when I saw the news, I went to the um, BBC website, and they had it on there, and then I think it was another major news site that had um, the announcement of the airports in Nigeria opening um, on August the 29th. Now, according to the BBC, in order to fly to Nigeria, on the, in order to travel to Nigeria, you have to have a negative COVID-19 test upon arrival. Like you have to bring, get, take your test before you leave and bring it with you. And you also have to pay for another test. When Once you get there, you have to pay. And I guess the people at the airport in Nigeria also administer a test that you have to pay for. So, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just what, you know, it's just what you have to do to get to where you're trying to go. And I'm assuming like if they find you positive for COVID, you may, you go into like a two week quarantine until, you know, you start testing negative or something like that. But, you know, I'm gonna just trust God and take care of myself and trust my ancestors that everything is cool, you know. And, you know, my trip is safe and blessed and easy. But <clears throat> another part to this video that I kind of wanted to discuss, um, is the whole repatriation movement because when I first actually my whole repatriation idea came along years and years ago like I'm thinking like 2006 2007 probably earlier than that um, around 2001 when I was in college I went to Jackson State University so as I was saying, my, my repatriation journey started back in 2001. I was minoring in theater at Jackson State University, and I had this um, Nigerian instructor named Dr. O. And one day in class, he just started telling us about African spirituality. He started talking about um, um, Mami Wata and the Orishas and stuff like that, and it kind of caught my interest. And, you know, like I really didn't know much about Africa and Nigeria beyond what the Western media was feeding us during that time. So I was like, okay, you know, it kind of caught my interest. And then fast forward a few years later, I started watching Nollywood films and I started, you know, getting a, a, a view of what Africa really looks like, you know, beyond what the, what our media shows us. And I'm like, man, I want to go there. I want to be a part of it. So I've had this desire for years, but as you know, I joined a couple repatriation groups um, like this past year. And at first I was excited because I was like, man, you know, I get to connect with other 
black Americans and black people in the diaspora who are, you know, trying to do the same thing I'm doing and we can kind of communicate and work together, maybe travel together. But it's due to like recent events and like, you know, situations that's taking place. I've decided not to participate in any type of major repatriation movements, you know, as far as like connecting with people in the diaspora. Now, don't get me wrong, I do have friends and people that I've met and talked to who are traveling and, you know, we communicate every now and then. And if anybody need any type of information from me, like if they need to contact me to ask me questions or if, it, you, know, if you think that it's something I can help you with, please, please feel free to ask me, ask me because, you know, we all need, you know, each other. We all need help sometimes. And I don't mind helping anybody, but as far as like major mass movements and stuff like that, uh, from the diaspora, <clears throat> repatriating back to Africa, I decided to just basically go it alone, so to speak. Um, number one, the first reason, because I haven't met a, a whole lot of diasporans who are interested really like I haven't really talked to a whole lot of people who are interested in going to Nigeria most of the people that I've met they're either talking about Gambia or Ghana or um, uh, Tanzania somewhere like that so that's one of the reasons and number two um, the second reason y'all honestly I don't want to go to Africa with a us and them mentality you know I think that it should be a united we you know when i go there i want to i want it to be unity between me between the people you know the the africans who are there you know any diasporans that i meet i don't want it to be like oh well you know i'm with this group of black americans who are repatriating we're gonna build our elite community over here and you know it, i don't want to i don't want to go with a us and them type of thing and that's why I thank God that I took that trip to Nigeria last year because I had a chance to meet people in Nigeria. I had a chance to meet and interact and connect with with people in Nigeria, with Nigerians who were friendly. You know, they welcomed me. They were very accommodating. You know, we maintained our relationships and our friendships even after I came back here to the United States. And some of them are helping me and they are providing me with opportunities now. So... When I repatriate, I want to seriously repatriate, like, I want to become part of their community. You know, it should be one people, like, you know, one people on one united front. It can't be a us and them, you know, over the diasporans and the Africans, you know. I don't, that's not what I want. You know, when I go to Nigeria and any other part of Africa, the first thing that I feel I need to do, that I feel any of us need to do, we need to pay attention, we need to listen, and we need to learn about where we are. We need to learn about the people who are there, you know, the culture, the way things are done, you know. We need to learn about the government and, you know, the way the society is, is, is ran, you know. So even if there are some things that's wrong, even if there are some things that, <clears throat> that we don't agree with or that we think hurt the people, you can't really fight against nothing if you don't know about where you are and what's going on. Like, you can't be, you know, you can't really fight against something that you're ignorant about. You can't really judge something that you're ignorant about. You know, it's like, you know, you have certain people who go to Africa and they complain about them speaking broken English. Okay, they speak broken English, but they can still speak and understand English. So that means they know two languages. Most of us in America, we only know one language. So it's like they can understand us, but we don't understand them. And some of us don't even bother to try to learn the language to understand. Like right now, like I took a Yoruba class earlier this year and I'm still not fluent in Yoruba, but I'm still working on it. But you know, like judgments, like people in Africa, they didn't come up like people in America. You know, our culture was different. We had more wealth we had more creature comforts you know so it's not really right for us to judge and a lot of the problems that they have in their communities we have the same problems in our communities too you know 
we have sex trafficking here in the United States. We have, you know, child pedophilia and sex trafficking. You know, we have, I'm sure it's sex tourism in the United States, whether people are buying or selling. The same, it's the same thing. You know, we have, and I've heard so much about the straw wigs. Okay, we got straw wigs over here too. All you got, I live in Atlanta, I see straw wigs every day. So, you know, let's not throw stones in the glass house, is basically what I'm saying. You know, if you're gonna go to a new place, then learn about that place. Learn about the people of that place and learn to see them as just other people and not not people who are who are subordinate or inferior to you because they're not you know and, and that's the thing i don't care if you're black american jamaican Ghanaian, nigerian you know wherever you're from as black people we not gonna all make it unless we get unless we stay we got to come together we got to come together as one it can't be a us and them and they over there and them down here and those down the street it's all, we all have to be one, and we have to be willing to, you know, learn about each other without judgment, you know, without disrespect, without the criticism, you know, because at first, I'll be honest, I was buying into the negativity, you know, because that's, that's what it appealed to, it appealed to, you know, my negative side, I have a negative side, you know, I have, sometimes I can have a negative mindset and negative thoughts, and I can be a judgmental asshole, just like the next person, but it comes a time where I stop myself. I have to stop myself and say, okay, Jackie, you know, this this not right. This ain't, you know, you, you need to get off of this frequency. And so at that point, I have to shift and realize, you know, okay, yeah, I got to shift. I got to, I got to get to a higher frequency. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're all just people. We all dealing with the same shit. We all going through the same problems and the same situations. You know, it just may be in a different form, in a different place you know to a different degree but anyway thank you for watching my video and like I said um, if you need any information from me I'll try my best to help you if you're repatriating um, I'll try to keep things updated on this channel and so you know we can all work together anyway peace